Against, that's carried. Thank you. Thank you. So now um, we would welcome to the table representatives of the Waihoro Sprayden Kashmir Community Board Report. Um, community Board with their report to Council. So Carolyn Potter, Chair of the Board. And is Melanie with you this morning? No, she's no. not. Um, having three jobs and a, a baby has suddenly caught up with her. All right. Well, um, Carolyn, good to see you. Um, looking forward to hearing your report to Council. Thank you. Can I just mention, um, apropos the public forum, um, where they were talking about housing, we have um, um, a range of vehicles on Hunter Terrace, which is a cul-de-sac adjacent to our, our the community, the board, the boardrooms that the community board uses, and of course the Beckenham Library, the beloved Beckenham Library, and these people, um, they they um, are in their cars and they are homeless. And again, it's yet again another example of how our libraries provide succour to those most in need, because the library gives them Wi-Fi and it gives them access to loos in the in the daytime, and actually um, treats them like an actual human being. And um, we get complaints about um, the homeless in those cars, but they are a hundred metres away from any housing, and we the least we could do. Um, and Barrington Playground, the staff initiated disability access for all the um, features in Barrington Playground, and I hope they access that staff that did the Barrington Playground because they were imaginative and great people. So the, C the City Council staff will be able to tell you who did it for, our, for us, because there's things in that playground that you don't even notice the first time you see it, yeah. um, and they are about the hearing or um, the people, the blind, you know, and they're great. And it's been a very successful playground for teenagers as well because they um, love the big round swing for disabled children. Um, the, I, just, I was looking through the grant. We've got no part A. I was looking through the grant, though we should have had. Um, I was looking through the grants today, um, and I was just looking at the range of grants that any, ordinary, any community board offers to its community. And I was looking at things like, for instance, 8,800 to the Nio Marsh House. And the Nia Marsh House has to scratch for money in order to be able to sustain the building in memory not only of Nia Marsh and um, her um, era, but the um, 20th century, as it was explained to me. Um, and $8,000 to chop down looming trees that were threatening not only them but their neighbours is the kind of thing that you don't want to have to spend money on. You want to spend money on enhancing the house. And so to give that grant means that that's an obligation to the community that that building does not have to um, scratch around all its other funders for money for. It's like buying underwear. You have to wear them, but it doesn't do anything for you. And um, it's the same with uh, chopping down trees. It doesn't do anything for you, but it, it had to be done. So that's a grant that I was really pleased that we could make. And also we sent um, a young man to uh, Football Fusion in England. I have no idea what that means, but we were delighted to do it. And um, a grant for uh, someone doing fencing, um, uh, fencing championships and climbing in New Caledonia. Um, Significant things. We've got a project in Addington which is about urban narratives. I've been to um, several of the meetings to, with Library and Heritage about um, this proposal for Addington as one of our oldest suburbs, or the oldest suburb possibly, um, and, and in order to preserve its heritage. And I didn't understand much of what was being said. It was um, terribly intellectual. But I'm, it will come out with results for the Addington people that I think will be beneficial. The Barrington Mall entry is still in hiatus, much to the absolute despair of the local community, who are desperate to get the right-hand turn out of that Barrington Mall into Barrington um, abolished, and has had the support of staff. We are awaiting a consent process. Staff are trying to do some minimal things that they can do on council land, but it is one that is causing a great deal of angst with the people in uh, the Sprayden and Barrington communities. Um, 54 Colombo Street, this is one of those issues that is, was existed before I came on the board 12 years ago. It's next door to the Beckenham Service Centre and, and, the Beacon, and the South Library. 
It's land that we thought and the building and the structure that we thought and, uh, could have become available to us post earthquake for um, even um, shelter for people displaced by the earthquake. Um, it has been land that has been looked about by, uh, about by several members of the community for several different re reasons that they could have used this land in this space next to the river, next to the library, um, for um, to benefit the community. It has never become available, notwithstanding our uh, several times approaches on the issue. Uh, it currently is being used by the machinery, etc., that's doing Colombo Street. You can't argue with that, but we'd like to think it will be available for the community to express interest in subsequent to this project. There is no funding for doing the fencing that the council considers to be imperative, but we'd like to think that um, in this next six months, this area of land will be made available for the community to register interest in in the many projects that have been suggested to us over the years. Um, the Christchurch um, Squash and Racket Club has built a gigantic building at the Cashmere Club, just up the road from us in the Beckenham Service Centre, um, South Library, and it's for, for squash all over Christchurch. And I think squash is due for a comeback. I think New Zealand's going to rise in the rankings, perhaps not to the height of the cricketers, but you never know. Um, so we are looking forward to the champions that will come from our area because of this building that's come into our um, Rohi. Uh, the Men's Shed St Martins, I was wrong on this. Uh, they had a public meeting to, for expressions of interest on a, a Men's Shed in St Martins. I said it wouldn't flow, uh, it wouldn't take flight. People um, of my generation were now interested in biking and doing all those kinds of athletic things. Turns out they're not, and they're very keen on the men's shed, and I was completely wrong. And as you can see, the meeting was highly successful. And we've got a cashmere, we've got a cashmere as we've discussed before, age-friendly action plan, and the Youth and Development Scheme has given out some grants. That's up. All right, thank you very much. Now, that does leave a, a very short time for some questions. Are there any questions for Carolyn this nothing. morning? Anne. I was interested, Carolyn, in what you were saying about the people sleeping in cars outside yeah. the library. And yeah. given the previous uh, you know, the public um, presentation we had from the city mission, mm. highlighting some of the issues, um, can, you, can you see the library having any role in perhaps helping those people access the kind of information that they need, for example, you know, identification, you know, driver's licences, that sort of thing. Could you see the library being uh, that sort of place? It's just been whispered in my ear. I didn't, I hadn't asked the librarians that because I do think librarians are a bit <coughs> like schools. They're asked to do everything. Yeah. Um, they, we do. Yeah. So the we, the service centre yeah. staff there are really good with these people. They come in quite often. Um, some of them have got dogs, so they've helped them with dog registration, and we've tried linking them up with the like the housing trust and people like that. But the, the service centre staff there are pretty incredible and really good with, with these people. Um, they just feel like at, at this time that's where they want to be. Um, so we're, we're trying to help them. Because I think as the, as the group of people who were here were pointing out, it's not just about housing, it's about... Um, them wanting to be housed, or as a, I, I had a phone call from a bloke the other day who had acquired a bull mastiff, and um, he knew, he knew that that would be preventative of him getting a house, but he knew, and so there were some things about people um, needing housing and ha wanting to have a house that is very sophisticated stuff that uh, I know that that particular unit, which my niece is involved in, um, um, uh, has to, it, it's, it's ma far more complicated than we, just looking at yeah. it, can even perceive. Yeah, we have a, um, in the Central Library, I don't know if you know, but we mm. have a, a, a person who has the role of engaging with, with um, those, those folk yeah. coming in. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering if you could see a role, a specific role being useful in, a suburb, in, the, in our suburban libraries. I can't make a comment on that. I do think librarians are asked to do all the things that school teachers are asked to do, and sometimes I think there's a limit. And um, but I, I just can't comment on that. I really think that that's one for the librarians to respond to. Okay. I would hate to impose work on librarians who, which weren't, they weren't trained for. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you. I'm keen to allow time for just one more question from Glenn. Thank you. Um, thanks, Carolyn. Some, um, uh, yeah, the dogs are company for a lot of people. So um, I know that. Yeah. yeah. So um, I, my understanding is the mission has some kennels. Are you aware of uh, yes. any landlords in the community who are taking a similar approach? When I shifted to Spraydon from my one year in Sumner, I advertised boring woman, boring middle-aged, that's what I was then, middle-aged, boring middle-aged woman with two dogs, and I got a response to that. But I, I think that I might appear, appear to be slightly more respectable and eligible for housing. In fact, there, so there are ways that you could um, introduce a dog to a landlord, but it, it, puts an it puts in the head an impediment. As we know. All right, thank you very much. Um, so we've got a, re a resolution in front of us to receive the report, um, which Phil Clearwater will move, Tim Scandrick will second. All those in favour say aye. 